Hi everyone and welcome to the study on the Alpha and the Omega, which is Jesus. And for this we'll be looking at three different aspects of Jesus being the Alpha and the Omega, with creation, the resurrection, and also when he recreates everything and he makes all things new. So let's look at our theme verses, the Alpha and the Omega. First we'll look at the Alpha, which is Jesus being begotten by the Father. That's Proverbs 8.23. I have been established from everlasting, from the beginning, before there was ever an earth, when there were no depths, I was brought forth. Again, Jesus being begotten from the Father. Not created, but begotten. And then we'll look at the Omega, which is the end of the Council of Peace. 1 Corinthians 15.24. Then comes the end when he, Jesus, delivers a kingdom to the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he, Jesus, must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. So again, uh, let's look at our the next verse here. Uh, Revelation 1.19, I, John, behold your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, on the seventh day Sabbath, and I heard behind me a loud voice as a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches. Okay, Jesus is revealing himself as the first and the last in this section. So let's take a look at his first work, which would have been creation. And we'll pick that up in Genesis 1.1. This is everything being created by God through Christ. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hover, hovering over the face of the waters. And then we'll read another section, Proverbs 8.25, talking about Jesus and his role specifically in creation. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet he has not made the earth or the fields or the primal dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he assigned the sea its limits so the waters would not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him as a master craftsman. So that is describing Christ's role. He is the hands-on person, so to speak. Um, as God is speaking, Christ is actually bringing it about. He is the master craftsman. So that is the summation of creation. Let's look in the next section on the Alpha and the Mega with regard to the resurrection. Of course, Jesus, when he raised, he was one of the first fruits, and he will be the one who raises those during the first resurrection. So we'll pick that up in John eleven twenty. Then Martha, as soon as, she, as soon as she had heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Jesus, Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, he will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Okay, and let's read more about that topic in 1 Corinthians 15, 20. But now Christ has risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by death came, uh, for by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive, but each one in his own order. Christ the first fruits, afterwards those are Christ at his coming. And then we'll also read in John six thirty nine. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that all he has given me I should lose nothing, but should raise them up in the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last day. So that gives us faith and hope and comfort for those of us who have lost some that we loved, that Jesus is the first fruits because he rose again. Our loved ones, if they died in Christ, will rise again as well in the first resurrection. And so let's read one last section, 1 Corinthians 15, 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption and is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. 
It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. And so it is written. The first man became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural word. And after the, the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord of heaven. As as was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. What wonderful, comforting words those are. And so let's look briefly. We'll transition here and talk about the 144,000. They are the last, and they are also the chosen. Matthew 20, 13. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Do not, do you, did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what is yours and go your way. I wish to give you the last man the same as I gave to you. Is it not lawful for me to give what I wish with my own things? Or is it your eye evil because I am good? So the last will be first and the first last. For many are called, but few are chosen. Then Revelation seventeen fourteen, these will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them, for he is king, Lord of lords and King of kings. And those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. So again, the last are the called, chosen, and faithful. This is the remnant in 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And then the last section we'll look at, we'll look at the protection of Jesus uh, during the time of trouble. It, he is encircling the remnant both in front of and behind. And we pick that up in Isaiah 58, 7. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out when you see the naked and you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh? Then your light shall break forth as a morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. And, of course, we know from Scripture all our righteousness is as filthy rags. So this, your righteousness, this is talking about, this is Jesus, the Lord, our righteousness. And then also Psalms 34, 3. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name forever. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me out of all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. Of course, this is a glorification that takes place in the most holy place. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord, Jesus, encamps all around those who fear him, and he delivers them. And also Zechariah 2.1. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. So I said to him, Where are you going? And he said to me, To measure Jerusalem, to see what it's width and what it's its length. Friends, this is 1844 when the investigative judgment begins. And there was the angel who talked to me going out, going out of the sanctuary. Another angel was coming out to meet him who said, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls because of the multitude of men and the livestock in it. For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire all around her, and I will be the glory in her midst. And we know that because the new Jerusalem in um, Ezekiel 48 is known as the Lord is there. And then also let's uh, look about recreation, Jesus making all things new. Isaiah 65, 24, it shall come to pass before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. This is during the millennium, thousand years of darkness. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. Isaiah 11, 6, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf and the young lion, the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. And jumping down to verse 9, They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as waters covers the sea. Revelation 21, 5, Then, those, then he who sat on the throne said to me, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Then Revelation 22, 12, 
And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So to summarize, Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He provides everything that we need in order to be saved, and it is his work, it is not our work. It is a high priest's work in the justification phase and the sanctification phase and the glorification phase it is only our requirement to die to self and he does the rest so let's think about jesus being the alpha and the omega with regard to creation uh, recreation and also for the resurrection blessings to you in the name of jesus